Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Igla da Silva Foundation 2021 Virtual Hope Gala. I want to thank all of you who joins us tonight here live and all those who have gave generous donation to our life-saving cause. I'm once again honored to be co-hosting this year's Hope Gala with Jennifer Johns Austin. As many as you know, Jennifer is a leukemia survivor, a blood stem cell transplant recipient. Welcome and thank you, Jennifer. Hello, good to see you, Iron, and so good to be with everybody. As a former patient and beneficiary of the great work of the Ecla de Silva Foundation, I always feel immense joy joining Iron for this very special evening. Thank you all for honoring us with your presence as well. Your presence and your support means so much to me, and I'm sure all who've benefited from the Ecla de Silva Foundation. I remember so vividly when Sean, my husband and I learned that I needed to find a donor to help save me from leukemia. Iram and his team at the foundation didn't hesitate and they were with us every step of the way. What makes the foundation so unique is the special care and attention that they show every patient and every family. They are right there to provide patients and families with whatever they need, logistical, emotional, and even financial support. I remember them coming to my home and planning with Sean an outreach campaign and also creating a video to share with the community because we needed the community to help save my life. Iram and his team were with us. They were available 24 seven. Because of your steadfast and unwavering support of ICLA, it's able to provide steadfast and unwavering support of patients and families. And for this and many other reasons, we thank you for being with us and we thank you for all of your support. Thank you, Jennifer, so much for sharing your experience with us. Tonight, we'll be sharing a number of patient stories and how your support has impacted their lives. So please stay with us. First, I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware how to donate. Every dollar raised will go towards the ECLA Cares program which provides logistical, emotional, and critical financial assistance to patients in need of blood stem cell transplants. So here is a few ways that you can donate. You can send a text message with the word ECLA Gala to 41444. Then we will receive a link to make the donation. If you are on Facebook, on YouTube, you can also click on the link on the bottom of the video and you go to our website, eclagala.org, to donate. Or you can go straight to the eclagala.org to make a donation. So, and also please feel free to use the chat feature to communicate and share your thoughts with us, either on Facebook or, or on YouTube. So thank you for joining us tonight. I also want to share with you, everyone, um, that we have a very special silent auction with only four items. Two round trip tickets anywhere JetBlue flies is one, is one of the items. Also, we have two beautiful pieces of art by Gonzalo Ivo. So make sure you visit the eclagala.org website, and then you'll find a link there where you'll be able to participate on the auction. I want to make sure that I don't want everyone to leave here because uh, the auction will be open until Friday, December 10. And we want to make sure that we will send you a reminder you go there and make sure you place your bids on the auctions. Before we dive into the program tonight, I want to recognize and hear from our amazing and generous co-chairs, Tanae and Claudio Brasferro, and Renata and, and Claudio Garcia. Tanae and Renata have a message that we wanted to share with all of you. Good evening, Igla da Silva Foundation friends and supporters. My husband, Claudia, and I are proud to once again serve as co-chair of Igla Hope Gala. We all have seen the impact Igla has had in the lives of people who needed to find a donor in order to receive their bone marrow transplants. We are excited about the Foundation's efforts to expand the emotional, logistical, and financial support to the patients and their families. Claudio and I have had a pleasure to attend some of the ECLAS events over the years and have heard directly from patients how critical 
it is to receive emotional and financial support during their treatment. The Isla da Silva Foundation provides a very unique and critical support system throughout the patient's treatment. We thank you for your generous support to Isla da Silva Foundation. Together, we make a positive impact on their lives during a time when they need it most. Please help continue providing this very important assistance. We are grateful for your support. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Icla da Silva Hope Gala 2021. I am Renata Garcia, your virtual co-chair for tonight. My husband, Claude, and I have been supporting Icla da Silva Foundation for about seven years now. During all those years, we witnessed Icla da Silva fulfill its mission, which for us can be simply defined as to provide hope. Hope to register as many donors as possible. Hope to find a match for each and all patients. This year, providing hope has an even broader meaning for Icla da Silva. After finding a match, many patients require financial assistance to support travel expenses, meals, and housing. It is a long and difficult journey, health and financially wise. Let's all support ICLA to make this journey an attainable one. In the words of one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou, when we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. I'm here tonight to ask you please to spread hope and blessings just by supporting ICLA da Silva Foundation. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Tanaya and Renata for your generosity and friendship. We also want to give a special thanks to our platinum sponsors, the Garcia Founda Family Foundation, Tanae and Claudio Bras Ferro, and Be The Match. Our gold sponsors, Baring Foundation, Brito Family Foundation, IMED View, and our silver sponsors, Jennifer Jones Austin and Sean Austin, Jessica Lapping and Andrew Worley, Kasiki, Anna Williams Isom and Phil Isom, LabCorp, Amanda Spinardi and Roberto Tom Thompson Molta and Ogovi. Thanks so much for all the sponsors and all of you for your generosity. It's because of you and your support that we are saving lives. I want to take a moment to, to thank those that already made donation during this broadcast. I want to thank Pat Flowers for her donation, Diomaris Jimenez, Marcia and Chris Tucker, and Carla Lopez. Thank you so much and I encourage everyone to continue to donate and I, we all appreciate on behalf of our patients. Jennifer, I think you're muted. I think you're muted. I got locked. Sorry about that, but now- no, no, We are live. It's true that we are live, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I, okay. I I think I locked it on my own and I apologize for that. Yeah. But I want to thank everybody just like you did for all of their support. Every gift, every single gift makes a difference. Now, I understand that this year the foundation has celebrated 29 years and that we've reached two major milestones. So can you share with us what those milestones are, Iron? Yes, Jennifer, thank you. Yeah, we have passed those two giant milestones and I cannot thank enough our volunteers, our staff, our board of directors, and all the generous donors that have to help us accomplish those milestones. This year, we reached 500,000 donors added to the Be The Match Registry. That's a half a million people, individuals who will have registered to poten become potential marrow donors and is ready to say yes to step up to donate bone marrow if they ever match a patient in need. That's 500,000 chances of a patient's finding a match. In addition, we also reached 1,000 patients who received a transplant from the donors that the foundation had recruited throughout the years. As you know, it always started because we wanted to find one person to save ICLA's lives. Today, 1,000 patients like ICLA have found their match and received their transplant. In addition, in 2021 alone, we have had the highest number of patients receiving transplants from donors that we have recruited. 
that's 109 patients that have received a transplant in the last year alone. Wow, Iram, you, you know, I know what that feels like. I know what that means. That's just such tremendous work and it's all possible, been made possible because of you and your team at ICLA. Uh, you all made this milestone achievable and all the people that have supported us. It's tremendous. Yes, Jennifer, and I wanna share with everyone an example of the lives that we have impacted. So please allow me to share Lee's story. Lee suffered from with IPAC syndrome and needed a transplant. Lee's donor was recruited by the Igla da Silva Foundation in Puerto Rico, and he received his transplant 11 years ago. Please let me share his story through a video, and he'll be joining us today live to give us an update. Uh, Lee had had health problems since birth, relatively minor things and different things, um, but they just kind of gradually built up until he was four. He was diagnosed with something called IPEX. It's a genetic mutation that causes the body to attack healthy cells. They were very clear that it would, um, it was a fatal condition, but there was something they could do for it. Um, that they had been doing bone marrow transplants. Uh, for a few years, five to ten years, on kids with this condition with some success. The ones who survived transplant had a good prognosis. I was actually relieved to know that we could do something about it because there are so many families that can't do anything about um, their children's conditions. I started doing it for a child who needed a transplant of medulla. Fue que entonces yo tomé la muestra de swap para el, para el niño, pero no fui compatible con él. Y eso pues quedó en, en los archivos. Y después de como algunos tres, cuatro años más tarde, David me llama y me dice que soy compatible con una persona que necesita un trasplante de médula ósea, que si yo quiero seguir el proceso y ser la donante. Yo le dije que sí. A ojo cerrado, como uno dice, pues sí rotundamente. Y ahí es que entonces me dice, sé que es un niño que tiene cinco años, pero nada más. Saben, no sé información, no sé dónde vive, no sé cómo se llama, nada. Yo. 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 Do you want to tell her what we used to call the donor during your transplant? Remember? We called her our real life superhero. No, my mom did. My, yeah, mom did that. I tried to put it in terms he would, he would that some real person somewhere um, did this to, to help make him better. Heck, what more do you need to understand, even if you're much older than six? No, chacho, eso fue una emoción bien fuerte porque yo no tengo baby tampoco y. Para mí sí, esa es la manera que Dios quiere que yo le dé vida a un niño. Sabe, para mí pues, bienvenido sea. Oh, it's amazing. I just stand and watch him in awe that he can do all these things now that he couldn't before. That all those normal things, those normal things that when you have a healthy child, you just take for granted. Estoy nerviosa, ansiosa, loca de conocerlo. Eso es como decir un hijo. Eso es como decir un hijo que no conozco. Que es la primera vez que voy a ver. I would say look at the long view of your life. When you are old and need others to take care of you, being a bone marrow donor would be probably the thing you would be one of the most proud donating to someone um, and giving that person a chance to survive, it would stand out as a shining moment in a lifetime. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Changed my life. Changed my son's life. Yeah. Yo lo único que quiero es darle de verdad las gracias a Papito Dios. A Papito Dios porque me dio la oportunidad de de dar vida. Y si lo tengo que volver a hacer una y mil veces más, lo sigo haciendo. De la fundación y las fundaciones que sean, aquí estoy.
Hi, everyone. Please welcome Lee and Anne, his mom, to join us now. Hi, Lee. Hi, Anne. Hi. Uh, hi. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so great to have you. As everyone saw, Lee was a little baby back then. <laughs> and, and look at him now. And yeah. I, I, it means so much to me to see have you guys here today. I would love to get some updates from Lee. I, I don't think, I, I, for looking at you, Lee, and you know, see how well you're doing, but I would love to hear some words from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was 11 years ago, but here I am now. I'm a junior in high school, and I'm I'm just doing I'm doing really good. I'm I'm staying moderately healthy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't know. It's just definitely wouldn't be here without your work and the the foundation yeah. and. Just want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now Lee wants to go to college and he's thinking about becoming a high school English teacher. That's, you know, and to uh, have the chance for him to even dream like that and think about college. You know, when he was five um, and six and recovering, um, you know, never, uh, you know, we, you know, we'd hoped and that I get to see him grow up. And um, here he's turned into such a beautiful young man. It's yeah. So thank you all. Um, you know, it's it's hard, but. But, um, you know, for the families out there waiting um, or going through it, you know, hang in there. You can do it. And and there's a bright future for you um, and your children out there. So, yeah, no, definitely. Thank you. Annie. And I'll bring here Jennifer as also a survivor to share with us because mm -hmm. it's two very powerful stories you know, that we are sharing here tonight. And. Uh, it, it's just amazing to see you all, you know, and that's what mm -hmm. keeps us going and encouraging us to keep, you know, working very hard to make sure that every patient have a chance, the chance that Ikla did not have, but mm -hmm. because of her, we are really saving lives now, and you are testimony for that. Uh, isn't it amazing, Jen, to see? I, you, you know, know, gets me every time. You think that you, you know, too. You think that you've seen one and you're good to go and, and then you see another person and someone like Lee and and what he's been through it and look at him and <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, I tear up every time and, and every time I forget to bring the tissues because I think I'm good but um, I'm just so happy for you all and excited about um, about your future Lee. Thank you. Really bright. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Lee and Anne, for joining mm -hmm. us tonight in this special moment. And uh, Anne, is there any message that we want to share with everyone who's watching tonight? Um, well, um, you know, thank you. It, even, um, um, you know, no matter, even something that seems small and insignificant to help someone, um, um, even if it's a kind word, you know, beyond the dollars, it's um, just the kindness to reach out to people who are going through a major health crisis, to let them know they're not alone, that somebody's thinking of them, and to give them a word of encouragement, because it's a really, really long haul um, that has lots of twists and turns, and just when you think, you know, you've hit the end, something else happens, and and um, so um, don't, yeah, remember the kindness along with the generosity um, that together we can all, you know, help us and support families to get through um, a challenge because, boy, it's worth it, you know, to see these beautiful kids grow up and, to, um, you know, to see people survive and go on to do wonderful things. Yeah, no, definitely. And I know, Anne, that you share with me that you got to meet you know, the donor again mm -hmm. and that you now to see her again. And now mm -hmm. she shared on the video, she didn't have a child yet, but now she does have a child. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just amazing the, yeah. you know, the story and how life is. But uh, mm -hmm. it gives me so much pleasure to have, you know, uh, be in contact with you and get to know you and continue to work together on this mission. So thank you for joining us tonight. And Lee, we'll be in touch. Uh, <laughs> see you again. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Wow. Uh, it's just amazing, Jen, like how, you know, those are the families that keeps me going for 29 years and there's more coming. So I just uh, wanted to first uh, thank everyone for their support. Now, since last time I shared you know, all the donations that are coming in, and uh, a number of more donations came. Now, I want to thank Carlos Wesley, Patricia Spuri, Katusha Ferro, Greg Kellerman, 
Tony Stubbs, Ann Williams with $8,000 donation, Jess Densenhauer, now um, Tony for $1,000 donation, Nicholas Hudson, and Jen Grady. Thank you so much for all your donation. And I want to remind everyone who is joining us now how they can donate. Um, very simple. Uh, you can send a text message, read the word ICLA Gala to 41444, and you receive a link. And once you click on that link, you'll be able to make your donation. For those of you watching us on Facebook, uh, there is also a link that directs you to the eclagala.org where you can continue to watch us tonight and also make your donation there. And don't forget the, for and the auction that we have as well with some amazing items. Round trip tickets by JetBlue, anywhere JetBlue flies. And I learned that JetBlue seems it's like flying to London now. Uh, so make sure you go there and post your bid. Uh, and beautiful art by Gonzalo Evo. Um, world-known artist that has been a raiser supporter for the foundation. So thank you all for your donation, and uh, I'm sure that um, you will enjoy the rest of the program tonight. You know, Iram, I keep on uh, hearing you use the word amazing. I'm using the word amazing because every moment of this evening is amazing. Hearing Lee's story and, and hearing his mom talk, that was truly amazing. And all of the gifts that are being made, no matter how big, no matter how, no matter how small, they're all amazing because they're going to make a difference. They make a difference because it empowers you and your team to do the critical work that is so necessary to support and lift up and give people the hope that they need in moments of crises like the ones that Lee experienced, that my family experienced. It means so much. Everybody here tonight is amazing. And um, I think we should talk a little bit about right now about the focus that uh, ICLA is expanding, the spaces that you're moving into and how you're enhancing your work around patient support, especially as people go through treatment. It's so important. Help us to understand what that's all about. Thank you, Jennifer. And yes, for the past 29 years, we have focused on adding donors to the Be The Match Registry. When we first started, when we were looking for a donor for ICLA, there were only 89,000 donors at the Be The Match Registry. Today, patients have access to over 30 million donors worldwide. In addition to adding donors, we also provided logistical, emotional, and financial support to many patients and their families. This is, this is where we are putting our strategic focus moving forward. Through ECLA Cares, we will be helping patients and their families understand the process and ne next steps in plain language. Our goal is to be with them during the difficult time and help them with the critical financial burden. We know that almost half of the cancer patients deplete their life savings within two years. My family is an example of this. We had to sell everything we had in Brazil and to try to save my sister's life. Our only hope was to save her life. But within two years of her treatment, we exhausted all the funds that we had. Thanks to a community on Roosevelt Island that started a campaign to raise funds for her treatment. To better illustrate the support that ECLA provides, I wanted to share with you a testimonial from a former patient, Honesty. Many of you witnessed Honesty meet her bone marrow donor, Michael, at the 2018 Hope Gala. Her mom is here today to give a testimonial about the support she has received and the struggles she had through going through treatment. So please, let's watch again, uh, honestly meeting her donor for the first time and the challenges uh, that she went through and how critical is equal support. So at this time, we're gonna hear a little music and we're gonna bring to the stage two beautiful people, our Shiro Honesty and her donor, Michael. I'm just looking forward to her life just moving forward and just continually enjoying it. So, I mean, register, I mean, I didn't even give it a second thought. It was just what seemed natural. As long as you are alive and healthy, it's the least that you can do for someone else. 
Since Honesty has met her donor, it's, it's really been a life changing event. They have been in contact from day one. So he has been a, he has became a part of our family. It has gave, given Honesty the opportunity to achieve some of her goals that she's wanted and which she is to be a nurse, actually a hematologist nurse. This foundation gave her that opportunity. Prior to getting the help through you guys, we really struggled financially because I wasn't able to work. And to not have that stress about how I'm gonna pay this and how we're gonna do this, it will leave stress because you have to be there emotionally for the child because they can't go through this and be emotionally bothered, stressed out, because that can affect your progress. So as a parent, you want to feel like, okay, I can be here for my daughter and still get the needs met, pay your rent, how we're gonna you know, eat and just gas going back and forth. Bills gradually got behind so between meals being provided, gas, and me personally, I'm thankful. Thankful because some people never get that opportunity. So because of this foundation, that gives hope. Talking firsthand from a mom of a daughter that has been sick most of her life. And because of this foundation, her life has been changed. It is it's, it's like really precious to my heart to have the foundation to be that support system because we all need a support system. And Igla De Silva was one of our support system. I just want to tell them, thank them for the bottom of my heart. My whole family is so grateful to this foundation. Wow. Honesty's mother said it all. You know, ICLA's, ICLA Cares is there. ICLA has been there. I know it. ICLA is there to provide support during the most critical of times. You know, when people's needs are greatest. And and really, there's no way to prepare for this. Is, is that fair, Iram? No way to prepare. Yes, and the need is urgent, uh, uh, Jennifer. And we are, we are helping bone marrow transplant patients with specific out-of-pocket costs not covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. Many times transportation, travel back and forth to the hospital, caregiver, urgent leaving needs, and sometimes protection from eviction from not being able to pay the rent. To better illustrate, let's let's watch this video about ECLA Cares. For the last 29 years, we have been fulfilling a life-saving wish. It was a wish made by a 13-year-old Brazilian girl named Icla da Silva. She wrote this wish in a note to her mother. She assured her mom that she was all right. She wanted her family to help her friends. She wanted us to help other patients find their matching donor. Many thought it was a pie in the sky dream, but over the years, we kept adding more donors to the registry. We added more than half a million potential donors to the registry. 86% of those donors were ethnically diverse, fulfilling an unmet need. More than 1,000 patients have been matched for transplant. We are proud of the help we were able to provide. It was a life-saving accomplishment. But there is still an unmet need. Too many patients are struggling with the financial burden that comes with a blood cancer diagnosis. The American Journal of Medicine reports that 42% of cancer patients deplete their entire life savings within two years of a diagnosis. Thanks to your support, the Icla da Silva Foundation has helped 2,373 patients with emotional, logistical, and financial support. We have assisted patients and their families with urgent financial support during an extremely difficult time in their lives. But we have only scratched the surface. The Icla da Silva Foundation understands the challenges that come with a blood cancer diagnosis. In order to continue saving lives, we have to recognize the financial realities. Blood cancer treatment, pre and post transplant, will last many months, sometimes years. Patient families are forced to ask themselves, how will I continue to work while my child is in treatment? How will I afford to pay the bills? The resulting challenge families face is the loss of income. 
This coincides with a dramatic increase in expenses. What will they do? How will they afford transportation to a treatment facility far from home? Where will they stay while their child is in treatment? How will they afford testing for family members as they search for a matching donor? What about basic living expenses back home? How will they afford to continue? The ICLA da Silva Foundation has established grants to help meet some of these financial challenges, which are critical to bone marrow transplant patients. They are awarded based on financial need, and they are necessary in order to receive treatment. With your support, patients and their families will receive assistance during this crucial time. With your gift, more patients will afford the critical care necessary to receive a bone marrow transplant. Thank you. You know, I'm sorry. I just, so many beautiful faces and um, just a testament to the work of Ikla um, through all these 29 years. You've dedicated your, pretty much your entire life, Iram, to, um, to working with these patients and to giving them hope. And I'm sure that you have so many stories to share and we're just seeing just, you know, just a, a small portion of them through the years. Your lifelong experience in working with these patients is so important, so important to ICLA Cares. Yeah, thank you for the kind words, Jennifer. And as we all know, it's because of the support of the general individuals that are with here tonight and those who can, were not able to attend, you know, those who are making a donation today, I want to thank Amita da Silva, Joseph Cardieri, Elsa Jones, Sadia Hills for that donation that came throughout the, the program tonight. And as you know, every donation counts. Either be a $25, $25 $100, $1,000—as you can see—is providing the gas and for those patients for transportation between back and forth to the hospital. And it's just uh, amazing all the support that we get. And I just want to remind one more time you now how you can make the donation if you have joined a little bit later. You now just send a text message with the word ICLA Gala to four one four four four. And then you receive a link and you'll be able to make the donation. And as in, and as you know, Jennifer, you now each patient has a unique challenge and needs. And what makes ICLA unique is our personal connection with those patients and families. I wanted to share with you a story on how we supported Lavinia and her family as she suffered with a rare immune disease and went through a bone marrow transplant. Lavinia has been our future patient for this gala. Lavinia Santos was diagnosed with a rare immune disorder as a baby. Her only hope for a cure was a blood stem cell transplant. Unfortunately, there was no matching donor for Lavinia on the bone marrow registry, and her family was introduced to the Icla da Silva Foundation to begin recruiting potential donors. Lavinia had been ill for several years. She had been on antibiotics for much too long. Her doctors wanted to move forward with a transplant even though a matching donor was not found. They recommended her mother, Anna, who was a 60% match. The family decided to move forward with the transplant. They had to travel to specialized centers away from home for this specific transplant. Due to the long periods of hospitalization and her mom being the donor, they needed additional help from a caregiver. Her dad also needed to return to work. Once again, the Icla da Silva Foundation stepped in to support her family. They provided funding for a caregiver to support her for the months during and post-transplant. At day 100, Lavinia's transplant was deemed successful. Her body had accepted the new cells. Lavinia had always wanted to be a veterinarian. Throughout her ordeal, she had a great desire to have a pet, but it was not permitted due to the risk of infection. On her first post-transplant birthday, she received two kittens. She was ecstatic. 
This February, she was released from her doctors. She is 100% cured. Obviously, her parents are very excited. We were very happy to contribute and make a positive impact on her life. Since the day she left the hospital, she has been getting better and better uh, every single day. So we count every single day and we are thankful for uh, everything that happened uh, to us and with her. And then we're, we're blessed that she's doing well uh, right now. The message we would like to give uh, to everyone that it's part uh, of the Ikla de Silva and somehow it does uh, give the help and support is to continue doing this excellent job, uh, the chance to give hope to families that are in need. Uh, it's very difficult for us as a parent to go uh, through all of that with your loved one. Uh, and then the support, uh, not only the financial support, but also uh, the drives and the people that work, you know, uh, with the Icla de Silva. We have to thank everybody, every single one, and ask God to bless everybody every single day uh, for everything that you guys do. And I have the pleasure to have Lavinia here with us today with her family. Thank you, Lavinia, and then for joining us today. You look beautiful. How are you? How are you all doing? Good. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, all right, good morning, Anna. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. How is Lavinia? How is La how are you, Lavinia? Um, I'm doing good after 2019 after the transplant. I don't have to take the medications anymore, and I'm really thankful for that. I'm so excited to, to see you and to meet you, Lavinia. You are beautiful, and uh, your story is amazing, your strength and your courage. You've got some phenomenal parents. And can I just tell you, I know a little bit about your journey. I had my own little journey about 11 years ago, and I remember that 100th day when they told me that the transplant took. So I'm just so excited for you and for your family. And I remember too, how much ICLA was there and I was there to support us. Tremendous. All right, thank you. No, we are here and we're, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you uh, for having us for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here and try to express how grateful we are for uh, everything that ICLA provided us, you know, uh, not only the emotional support, but also before the transplant, our, you know, journey, looking for a donor, uh, everybody helping us, uh, giving us, uh, you know, the courage we need to continue looking for Lavinia's donor, and then, you know, making us uh, moving forward. And so every day counts. And now two years uh, after the transplant, you know, we still stop today and think about everything we went through and the days that Lavinia has now without all of those medications that she had to take every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're grateful for everything that happened in our lives and all the support that uh, ICLA uh, was able to provide us. No, thank you, Gilmar. And I know you have been an inspiration. Lavinia has been an inspiration to me and so many uh, who have joined the registry. And Lavinia, how is your little, your, your cats, your kittens? Uh, they're not kittens anymore. <laughs> well, I, I can't, Im I can't yeah. imagine. <laughs> Are they mischievous? Are they like, you know, do they run around? Do they get into things, the cats? Uh, yes, they still play with each other, but now they usually sleep a lot. <laughs> No, thank you. Thank you, Lavinia. Thank you, Guilma and Anna, for joining us today. Lavinia, look beautiful. Thank you for sharing your story with us. And I look forward to connect with you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you thank very you much. For thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What a beautiful little girl and what an amazing journey. Mm -hmm. But Jennifer, as, many, as we can see, uh, many patients still have a difficult time finding a match. And the donor, the need for donor is still great. So I encourage everyone to who has not joined the Be the Match Registry to please join. It's very easy to join the registry nowadays. 
uh, what you have to do is just send a text message with the word MATCH22 to 61474. And again, you'll receive a link and you'll be able to complete the registration. And be the match will send you a, a kit where you can swab your mouth and you can join the registry as well. And you never know, it might save a life. So I encourage you, if you have not joined the registry, please do so. I also wanted to share one more story and give everyone an update on another patient that many of you probably know him, Isaiah Bullock. We have been working with Isaiah for over six years, since he was four years old. Unfortunately, Isaiah never found a matching donor. And in June of 2021, he also received a hopper transplant from his dad. It was three days before his 10th birthday. That it was, the transplant was 10 days before his 10th birthday. Isaiah is now over 100 days post transplant and doing really well. Throughout the years, we have been in contact with the family and they have always participated in our events. Please watch this video about Isaiah and how he's doing today. He looks great. My name is Vincent Bullock. My name is Aya. I'm Shalia. And this is Anaya. My son Isaiah, he's a, he's a loving child. He loves kids. He, um, he loves people in general. Whenever he do anything, he want to go around people. In time I grow up, I want to be a policeman. <laughs> when Isaiah was diagnosed with IPEC, he was eight months old. And uh, me and my wife just kind of broke down and started crying. Your heart hurts because your son is going through this. So it's very hard and that's the only hope, the only prayer, the only anything for him right now is a bone marrow transplant. The doctors told me, you know, the best bet for you is to have another child. We did have the baby. She is a beautiful girl, and um, she's not a match. The Eaglet the Silver Foundation has been very, very good behind us. They are helping us very much. And it's not just my son. It's all the other kids and all the other people that actually need a bone marrow transplant. Please help. I have a son that runs around and play and jump up and down, and the reality I am not finding a match. Please don't put needles in my hand no more. Because right now, his body is fighting itself. And I know sooner or later, he's gonna get sick and he's gonna end up in the hospital again. And I don't want that. But for now, I'm gonna make every day count. You can save a life. The Ikla da Silva Foundation began working with Asaya and his family in 2015, when he was four years old. More than 2,000 marrow donor drives were held in his name. Over the years, he received a lot of press coverage. We worked with Asaya's family throughout his journey. Their family became a part of the Ikla family. They joined us for events supporting patients, like the Ikla 5K and our mix and match creating emotional bonds between survivors and searching patients. But a matching donor was never found. Time was running out. His doctors could not wait any longer. On July 27, 2021, Asaya received a half-matched transplant from his dad. It was three days before his 10th birthday. The transplant was successful. His body has accepted the new cells. We wish Asaya a long, healthy, pain-free life with many, many more birthdays to celebrate. Speaking like Asaya is, is, is part of my family. As you can see, he was four years old, and I have seen his grow in contact with his family. The struggle they went through back and forth when mom and dad or mom could, could not work. Um, they moved upstate New York. The treatment was being uh, done at New York, and in New York. Transportation back and forth on places to stay. And just 
gives me so much energy to continue the work that we are doing because the need is great. And our mission is to be side by side with those patients to be able to provide the support. I don't think there is better way to describe ECLA cares than the testimony from these patients. Absolutely. And, and currently, uh, in a, a new recent patient as well that I wanna share the story with you. Um, she was diagnosed in 2000, 2020, five years old, Mary Angel Baez. And they went, she went through several rounds of chemo and went into remission. But unfortunately, this September, the cancer returned. This is a very hard work family and in desperate situation. Her mom works cleaning house, the daddy in construction. Please listen to her father's Miguel share his story. Hi, my name is Miguel Baez. I am the father of Maria Angel Baez. My daughter got diagnosed with leukemia, a other that is acute um, medical leukemia uh, in the beginning of 2020. Since I've been in touch with Ellen, he's been amazing. Uh, he provided me a lot of information. He's been a lot of support from me, from my wife, from my entire family. He gave me the data benefits, like everything will be fine since the first day. So when we found out that the, my daughter leukemia came back, um, it really destroyed our family. The, the first option that the doctor told me, since the leukemia is back, your daughter is going to need a transplant. Uh, I was kind of lost. Since I spoke with the foundation, they explained to me the ocean that we have on the table, uh, how they can help me to find somebody who can be the match for my daughter. That made me, uh, that made me to like uh, breathe again. Uh, they did a test on both parents, me and my wife. He took about like, uh, two weeks and going to get the research and we finally had the research and they say that my wife is the best candidate to be the match with my with my daughter. I, I never told that I'm going to be in a situation with my daughter about leukemia. Uh, it never came to my mind. I never had to wait to support my family because whatever they need was there. But when you have somebody that you love the most in the hospital and you have to wait, it's not easy. Sometimes I go to sleep and I don't pray anymore. When, when we found out that leukemia came back, I share my, my behavior. Maybe on the wrong direction, to be honest with you, because I start believing most like it in a lot of things. I don't know who to believe. I don't know how what to say. I don't know how to react sometimes because it's not easy to, to have the most important person in your life in the hospital and you have to wait. You have to wait because you have no other choice that just wait for resource, just wait that everything work. As soon as I spoke with a social worker and I spoke with Aaron, everything changed. Another Miguel starts laughing again another beginning. 
another hop, another door open because the information and the support that I received through the for the last two months is being amazing. When we found again that it was coming back, I thought it was over. But it's not over. It's not. And have a foundation like Ella da Silva. If give the family the support that we need to think different. And the word thank you. It's not enough. Those are some of the things that we hear from patients when we work with them, Jennifer. Many times we are not aware of all the challenges they go through when they have a, 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 a child in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's too much at times. It's um, I, I I was forty, and um, to my mother it was as though I was an infant myself. You know, it's um, you don't know where to turn. You have ups and downs, difficult moments. It, it's not just it, it's the fine. It's not just the financial. It's the emotional roller coaster that you're on, and having ICLA cares in your life. We know firsthand helps to make a difference because, you know, like many families don't know what the ups and downs are. The moments where you think that you're winning and then there's something that sets you back. And so um, I know that, you know, I like many others that have benefited from ICLA feels the, gra you know, feel the gratitude. You know, like, like Anne said, sometimes they, they only need also a few words, encouragement mm -hmm. or a word. Now, even through all this struggle, financial, waiting for a donor, searching for a donor, many things they don't know, they don't get the explanation. But I just want to continue to thank everyone. And we just want to illustrate a little bit behind what happens behind the scenes when we are working every day to support those families through those stories. So I want to thank once again, everyone who's here tonight, everyone who supports the foundation through your generous contribution. I want to thank Giselle Vergara, Marcia Casab, Graça Gomes, Rachel Feldman, Natalie Jones, Chris and Bridget Barry for her, that $2,000 donation. Thank you very much. And remind everyone again how they can donate by texting the word Hope Gala to 41444. And together we will be providing responses, responding to those patients when they reach out to us with some struggle and take that worry about how I'm going to continue to pay for the guys, for the housing, the lodging closer to the hospital to stay right after the transplant. And that's what EcoCast is all about. Jennifer, I have one last story tonight that I want to share, and it's from Jose Perez. He tells us that is, it wasn't until after he gave bone marrow, this is a bone marrow donor, when he, and then when he first met Isabella, that he recognized the impact that he had made in her life. I hope you will recognize the impact that each one of you is making on the life of a searching patient. Let's see and hear from Jose. Good evening. My name is Jose Luis Perez. Tonight I'd like to speak on behalf of the Eco de Silva Foundation. On April 25th, 2013, I had the privilege of donating bone marrow to a young girl, Isabella. And quite honestly, at that moment, I didn't know what impact I was having or how insignificant it was. But on October 14th, 2015, that's when it hit me. I had the honor of meeting Isabella and her family for the first time and really understanding her story at that moment and understanding the impact my decision to donate bone marrow had made me realize that I was able to make a difference. I was fortunate enough and privileged enough 
and blessed enough to be a perfect match. And although we may not be a perfect match, there are ways that we can support the efforts. The ICLA the Silva Foundation has been committed to supporting families who are going through extremely difficult times. So tonight, I'd like to encourage you to continue supporting the efforts of the foundation. They're making an impact and a difference in many lives. Thank you. Jose said it, you know, um, mm -hmm. what is so amazing for this work, Jennifer, as you know, is the people that join us. Right. Um, it's not me, it's not only you, it's the, build, the community that you're building. It'll be patients, patients, families, marrow donors, all the individual su supporters and financial donors. And I'm very thankful for all the donations we have received so far. And once again, if you have not donated yet, please give any amount. As, you have sh as we have shared, your donation impact patients is such a critical time. We are very fortunate with our health and our families. We have set a goal for this gal of raising $250,000 for ECLA Cares. Even after the event, we still can receive donations until the end of the year for your generous contribution and continue to support the foundation as years to come. I encourage everyone and remind everyone again, if you have joined us a little bit later, the way you can give is by sending a text message with the word Hope Gala to 41444, as you can see on the screen, to make a donation. And don't forget about the silent auction that will be going on until Friday, December 10th, for the amazing prizes that we have received. I also want to thank Jennifer, everyone for attending tonight, as well as all those wonderful, beautiful messages on social media, on Facebook, for watching us or on YouTube. Um, and I want to thank everyone for their support. I want to thank you, Iram, for um, 29 years of commitment to your sister and her legacy, but also to all the people who've benefited in the many years since, myself and my family included. Uh, I wanna thank you for allowing me to be a part of this event uh, for so many years. It brings me joy and reminds me as if I need reminding of how significant ICLA is in my life and, and in my my husband's life too. My, my husband serves as the chair of the board and, and, and he's so honored. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us tonight uh, due to work travel, but you've allowed us to be a part of this family and um, we can't imagine uh, being part of a better family. And, and I also just quickly want to give a shout out to my friends and my family, Ann williams Isom, who is a member of the board, and you mentioned, called her name, her generosity in time and, and of treasure, and all of my friends and family who give of themselves their talent and their treasure. Once you become a part of the ICLA family, you're embraced for a lifetime. You've given us so much and you've, you've given us reason to hope and to pour into others to give them hope. So thank you, I thank everyone for being a part of this evening. Now, we're celebrating the 29th, but next year is going to be the 30th anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the foundation. And um, can you tell us what's the game plan? How are we going to celebrate that milestone, that 30th anniversary, Ira? Jennifer, I'm, I'm so excited, and, and it's hard to believe 30 years. 30 years, I still remember Eclipse smiling in the hospital from 31 years ago. And it's 30 years since her wish continues to make an impact on patients' lives. And we have to celebrate. And to celebrate this special event, we need to go back live. I wanna see each one of you there in person to give you a hug and a thank you for all your support through this hard, difficult time. And I'm excited to share that we are going to celebrate live. We have pick a date of October 12, 2022. Uh, and we still, it's going to be in New York City. Uh, we still work on the details of the venue, but very soon we'll be able to share with you. And as many of you have attended our gala before, uh, we wanted to celebrate the lives that we saved. We want to raise the funds needed for Equal Cares. And we have, we're going to have a great time. 
uh, the dance floor. I love seeing all of you having a great time there. And the 30th anniversary, we have to make it big. So please join us as soon as possible. I want to invite everyone, please join our planning committee, no matter what you do, our host committee, bring your ideas, your thoughts, your friends, and everyone that you know that can support this cause. So together we can continue to celebrate for another 30 years. It's going to be a wonderful night. And I know that my mother and my sister mm -hmm. and all of my girlfriends, we're going to be there. We're going to dance the night away. And Iram, you're going to dance with us. We don't get to dance together, but we're going to dance together. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, definitely. No, definitely, Jennifer. So I want to thank everyone. I'll be sending a reminder for the date. Uh, I want to continue to thank everyone who has given tonight. Uh, Randy Miranda. Roosevelt Ramos, Lauren Heroes, Katrina Kane, and please continue to give. Uh, the websites continue to be open. We want to make a big impact on the lives of patients out there, and please be involved in many different ways and capacity. I want to thank, of course, our board of directors of the Eagle the Zero Foundation. I'm very proud of each one of you for your dedication for many years and the time that you give to the foundation, our staff and volunteers, and all of you that are here in a way supporting the foundation year after year. So thank you. Thank you for you, Jennifer. We did very special thank you to you for always co-hosting the gala with me, sharing your story, and always being such a great support and sharing your, your story with us as well. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Please continue to give and let's celebrate the lives that we saved. And I wanna thank all the patients and family and marrow donors who join us tonight to share their story as well, because the impact that we're going to make in 2022 is going to be even bigger because of all the support that you have provided. So thank you all. Thank you, Jennifer, and good evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs>